Yeah. Analytics off the chain, all the channels not the same. Jake and Kyle, you know the name. Headline of nation, we running the game. What is going on, Headline Nation? Jake, Fantasy Headliners. Hopefully, everybody's doing well out there today for this Thanksgiving week. Happy Thanksgiving to you and yours out there in Headliner Nation. And today, we're going to be talking about quarterbacks that we're going to start and sit for Week 12 Fantasy Football. Before we get into all that, we do have a couple other things to cover. First thing being, how did we do just last week in Week 11? And really, despite so many studs deciding to go out there and suck balls for the week, it wasn't a bad week overall. Out of the 26 quarterbacks we gave a start or sit designation to that played this last weekend, 17 of them were correct for an accuracy percentage of 65%. Some of the biggest misses, Ty Rod, or as Kyle likes to call him, Ty God Taylor, out there doing it with his feet, Joe Flacco. He's having a, a renaissance, I guess. It was just a one-week thing. I don't know if we can count on that every week from Joe Flacco. Russell Wilson still struggled, but some of the hits. Cam Newton has returned to fantasy. Tennessee Superman once again. Tua out there once again finishing inside the top 12. And Trevor Simeon may not be leading the Saints to victories, but he's scoring some fantasy points, and he was another hit for us as well. Now, also, next up, our draft guide. A lot of people love our draft guide, and it's a little bit early to be talking about draft guides, but we did this last year, and people loved it because people love to save money. So if you head over to our website right now, thefantasyheadliners.com, you can pre-order our 2022 draft guide for only $11.99. The cheapest price you're going to ever find. It's never going to get any cheaper than that. It's usually right around 600 virtual pages of everything you need to dominate fantasy football. So if you're looking to save a little bit of money, pre-order yours now because it's live up on the website. Don't hesitate uh, to grab one of those. And then also, remember, I'm giving away $500 cash in just like a, a week or so, the end of the month. $500 cash just for someone who signs up for a new account on prize picks. All you got to do is head over there. There's a link down below as well. Create that new account. Use the referral code headliners. Make your initial deposit of $20. We'll match your deposit all the way up to $100. And then you're entered to win $500 cash, which I'll be giving away here. End of the month. Looking forward to that. But uh, I think it's time. I think it's time that we head over to every player, every matchup, every game here. And we're going to kick it off on Thanksgiving Day, obviously, with three games Thursday. The first one being between the Chicago Bears and Detroit Lions. And why not kick it off with two teams with quarterback issues here right off the bat, right? I mean, here we go. For the Chicago Bears, we know that Justin Fields is dealing with a rib injury, so it sounds like we're going to see another week of Andy Dalton. Plus, Jared Goff dealing with an oblique injury. Looks like we're probably going to see Tim Boyle. The uh, marquee matchup of Andy Dalton and Tim Boyle on Thanksgiving Day. First game of the day, not exactly ideal for a lot of people out there. Now, sure, Andy Dalton came in last week and looked pretty good after the field's injury through 11 for 23, 201 yards and two touchdowns. Not a great you know, passing percentage, a completion percentage, but the big plays are what really helped him to the likes of Darnell Mooney and Marquise Goodwin. And this isn't a bad matchup, right? I mean, going up against Detroit, they allow right around 20 fantasy points per game. But there's so many safe options out there. I can't imagine there's too many people reliant on Andy Dalton. If you're in a two-quarterback league and you're looking for somebody, I don't mind Andy Dalton in that situation. He's probably somebody I'll find towards the bottom of my top 20 overall rankings, but not going to be a start here for normal 10 to 12 team leagues. I expect them to find some success on the ground with David Montgomery and not have to throw as much. So we're definitely going to sit Andy Dalton in those, in those normal leagues anyway. As for Tim Boyle. Tim Boyle is my start of the week. <laughs> no, he's really not. We're not starting Tim Boyle in fantasy football on Thursday uh, during Turkey Day. No, the last thing you want to do is that, now watch, Tim Boyle going to go out and put up big points. But I I'm not starting him in fantasy football, no way. Which takes us now to game two on Turkey Day. It's the Las Vegas Raiders and Dallas Cowboys, two teams kind of in the midst of some struggles, right? You have the Las Vegas Raiders who have lost three straight, the Dallas Cowboys who've lost two out of their last three, and now Dak doesn't have Amari Cooper and potentially doesn't have CeeDee Lamb. Now, there's some rumors coming out that he could be available for the game on Thursday, but honestly, I'm not banking on it as of right now in a short week. Uh, Thursday game, uh, I I'm not loving it, especially with it being a day game on Thursday. But for whatever reason, we have have struggles for Las Vegas too, who still has weapons. Darren Waller kind of hit and miss. Hunter Renfro hit and miss. They don't want to include Brian Edwards like at all. So there's just some struggles there on the offensive side of the football for Derek Carr and the Las Vegas Raiders as well. But this isn't a bad matchup for either quarterback. Both defenses allow right around 20 fantasy points per game. Now, last week we saw Dak struggle, right? His worst game of 2021 
probably by far. It was also the most he's ever been sacked here this year, too, with five times. I'm a little bit worried about Dak Prescott this week. I know it's hard to sit Dak, but I don't see him as a really safe option here in Week 12. For Derek Carr... I have to expect this is going to be an offense that's going to have to throw and throw consistently on a weekly basis. The running game is kind of inept at this point, utilizing more Hunter Renfro, more Darren Waller. And for the love of God, get Brian Edwards more involved. That guy is a stud wide receiver that's just not getting an opportunity. I actually like Derek Carr slightly more in this game than I like Dak Prescott. Both are going to be starts, but Dak is going to be a little bit lower in my rankings here this week. Which takes us to the third game of the triple header here, the Buffalo Bills and New Orleans Saints. Now, for most of us, we're in straight food coma mode by this point, right? We've eaten so much food, had so much to drink that we are just, we're on the couch and our eyes are open, but like nothing is computing, right? Like we're just watching it, just like, it's like mind numbing at this point. But for the, the Buffalo Bills and New Orleans Saints, we saw Josh Allen somewhat struggle last week, right? He still finished fringe top 12, and he's got that super safe floor. A matchup going up against the New Orleans defense, they allow over 24 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks. That's second most in the NFL. We know Stephon Diggs is hot. Uh, he really needs some more weapons to step up on a consistent basis, right? We never see, you know, Emmanuel Sanders anymore. Cole Beasley's been banged up. He's kind of hit and miss. Can Dawson Knox get going? Uh, he's still a safe floor start but here's the great part this is where you need to head over to prize picks but you need to do it at like 11 59 p.m on wednesday night because at midnight they have themselves a deal going on that is a must it's, it's an absolute win they're setting the over under for josh allen's passing yards at 0.5 passing yards it's a guaranteed win it's a free square right so if you go in there and all you have to do is select another quarterback you win it and you got the two you need to make some money there on thanksgiving so don't miss out on that deal make sure you're on price picks signed up and it goes live at midnight on thursday now for new orleans when do we see more Taysom Hill? I know he's not healthy either, but New Orleans really needs a win. Bad, right? Trevor Simeon isn't playing horrible, but they're not winning ball games. Just too many turnovers at times. Uh, going up against Buffalo, they're number one in the NFL against opposing quarterbacks, allowing only 14 fantasy points per game. Now, Trevor Simeon has hit at least two touchdowns now in three straight games. However, all three of those games are losses. He's doing great for fantasy football, just not great for NFL franchises in winning ball games as of right now due to this difficult matchup primetime Thursday night football here I'm gonna go ahead and sit Trevor Simeon this week and not risk it going up against Buffalo who was just embarrassed by Jonathan Taylor and the Colts last week but finally, the time has come where we can thrust it over to Sunday football where we have the Pittsburgh Steelers and Cincinnati Bengals. And we had a vintage Big Ben Roethlisberger sighting just last week. Dude went 28 of 44 for 273 yards passing, three touchdowns and no interceptions. I didn't know Big Ben still had it in him. It was his best game of 2021. And now he's had back-to-back -back games with at least two touchdowns throwing and no interceptions. Now, he's faced this defense before. Just back in week three, he threw for 318 yards, one touchdown, two interceptions. But that game was in Cincinnati. Now he's at home, and it seems like he has... For right now, a healthy Chase Claypool. He's really utilizing the tight ends that he has in Eric Ebron and Pat Frymuth inside the red zone. And it's kind of like vintage old school Heath Miller in this offense, right? They're really getting those tight ends involved. Now, since the, then we know they can score points, right? And they could force Ben to have to throw the ball for all four quarters. So you know what? I'm game. I'll throw in the Big Ben. He's going to be a start for me here this week. As for Joey B and the Bengals, he's kind of had back-to-back -back bad games now, right? Only one touchdown total over his last two games combined. He's also had three turnovers in that same span, but now a matchup going up against Pittsburgh. They allow right around 20 fantasy points per game. In this matchup back in week three, Joey B threw for 172, three touchdowns, and one interception. He's still going to be a start, but his, his ceiling is going to be slightly lower. This isn't a bad defense in Pittsburgh. Really needs Cincinnati to get going again with the likes of Jamar Chase, Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins has kind of fallen off. Really has the opportunity. Plus, it wouldn't surprise me, honestly, is this a C.J. Uzama week? It could be here for the Cincinnati Bengals. I'm going to continue to start Joey B because that ceiling is just too high to sit. Now we go over to Indianapolis, though, for the Colts and the Bucks, and TB12 is back to his efficient ways, right? Just this past week, another 300 yards passing and two touchdowns. Love to see that from old man Tom Brady. Plus, watch out, everybody. Be careful. Dude's out there scrambling and hurdling defenders, getting all fired up and running. 
I don't think I've ever seen Tom Brady run like that before in an NFL game. But it, it was fun to watch, and it's obviously one of those things where we know Tom Brady going to put up points. Now, Indianapolis, they allow run around 20 fantasy points per game, seventh most to quarterbacks, and they're super hard to run on, not so much to pass on. So I expect another good game here from Thomas Brady. As for Carson Wentz. Not going to entirely hold last week against him. It was a bad weather game, but they're back at home. He's protecting the football. Only has three interceptions on the year, which is crazy to say for Carson Wentz. And it's really easier to throw on Tampa Bay than it is to run on them with the likes of Michael Pittman. And Jonathan Taylor, with the way he's playing right now, really raises that ceiling every single week. Even though he's had a couple bad games here as of late, I'm going to go ahead and fire up Carson Wentz as a start this week. But now we drop all the way down to South Beach for the Miami Dolphins and Carolina Panthers. And sure, Cam and the Panthers just lost this past week. Kind of ruined the storybook comeback, right? But Fantasy Cam is here right now, and we're going to ride this train as long as we possibly can because he's really utilizing the short passing game. And we already know about the rushing upside every single week with Cam Newton. He completed 78% of his passes and had three total touchdowns on the week. Now going up against Miami, they allow over 23 fantasy points per game one of the worst rush defenses in all the NFL. They allow the third most points to quarterbacks in the NFL. I'm going to enjoy this one once again and start Cam Newton. As for Tua, I loved Tua last week, right? I had him inside my top 12 in my rankings, had him as a start. I don't love him as much this week going up against Carolina. Now, last week, Taylor Heineke went out and looked pretty dang good against the same Panthers defense, but Tua's really spreading it around. And what really worries me the most is that I can see Carolina controlling the time of possession here with Cam and Christian. McCaffrey and really limiting the offensive opportunities that Tua has, which will then give him less opportunities at scoring. Kind of why I'm going to drop him down the rankings here this week. He just may not have enough opportunities here this week to put up one of those top 12 performances, so he's going to be a sit for me. Now we head all the way up the East Coast, though, to Foxborough for the first place New England Patriots, which is crazy to think about, and the Tennessee Titans. And someone, for the love of God, get Ryan Tannehill some help in the passing game. And while you're at it, get A.J. Brown a glass of milk or something, because dude just can't stay healthy. He's always on the sidelines, banged up with something. I think... Does he need more milk? I don't know what it is. Somebody help him out because Ryan Tannehill definitely needs some help. He's having to throw more now than he ever has, and that's really not his game. We knew they were going to have to throw a little bit more when Derrick Henry went down. I don't think we were expecting this, so we do not want Ryan Tannehill out there throwing 40 or 50 times a game. It leads to too many mistakes, and the run game just isn't helping him at all. Now he gets a matchup against the Patriots, who are playing great football, allowing only 14 fantasy points per game, second fewest in the NFL. They're playing great right now. We haven't seen Ryan Tannehill throw for two touchdowns since week eight, and he has more interceptions over the last five weeks than we saw him throw in all of 2020 or 2019. I love Ryan Tannehill. I love what he brings to the Tennessee Titans, but I don't love it this week, and he needs more help consistently. What I'm going to do, I'm going to head over to prize picks, and I'm going to select the under on Ryan Tannehill. It's currently set at 225 and a half. I I hate to do it, but this week, I'm going to have to sit Tanny. But for the Patriots and Mac Jones, he's arguably the best rookie quarterback here in 2021. Can anybody argue that? I mean, he's not out there putting up ungodly numbers, but he's winning ball games and he's not hurting his team. And he's not really needed to throw a lot. And that's exactly what is benefiting him. He's really managing games at this point and leading the Patriots to victory by really relying on their running backs every single week. In fact, he hasn't thrown for over 40 pass attempts in a game since week four. Now he gets a matchup going up against the Tennessee Titans. They love right around 22 fantasy points per game. But honestly, in this game, I see a whole lot of Damian Harris, a whole lot of Ramondre Stevenson, and then you're just going to sprinkle in some Mac Jones. Wouldn't surprise me if we see him get right around 150 yards and a touchdown. Not huge numbers, but enough for the Patriots to once again go out there and be victorious against the Tennessee Titans. Which takes us over to New York for the Giants and Eagles and... Jalen Hurts just came off a game in which he only threw for 147 yards and no passing touchdowns, yet finished his quarterback three overall on the week. Uh, This is what we talk about every single week, right? He had 69 rushing yards and three rushing touchdowns just this past week. This is why you start this guy every single week. You know he's going to go out there and get you that safe rushing floor. Whatever he gives you in the passing game is like the cherry on top, maybe some sprinkles, chocolate sprinkles, rainbow sprinkles, maybe a cherry, whatever, and some whipped cream. It doesn't matter. Whatever you get through the passing game is a bonus because he's really going to carry you to a safe floor every single week due to his legs, so he's going to remain a start here for sure. As for New York, and Daniel Jones, Danny Dimes, whatever the hell you want to call him, 
we got to stop hyping this kid up. I mean, I don't think I've ever really been aboard the Daniel Jones hype train, but so many people want to continue to give this guy chances. And honestly, dude ain't got it. I mean, he, he just ain't got it. I mean, at times, I think Kadarius Toney could be a better quarterback out there. He's got a cannon of an arm. He just can't stay healthy. Now, sure, he's had to deal with a lot of banged up weapons all year long, but we continue to give this guy excuses And he continues to disappoint when he has weapons at his disposal. In 10 games this year, he's only thrown for nine touchdowns. And what we've really counted on in the past, that rushing upside, that hasn't been there in forever. He hasn't had a rushing touchdown since week two. No way I'm starting Daniel Jones right now. There's just too much inconsistency. There's not enough ceiling. There's not enough touchdowns for him to make me realize, hey, you know what? I'm going to start Daniel Jones. No, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to ruin my Thanksgiving weekend by starting Daniel Jones this week. Now we head down to Florida for the Jacksonville Jaguars, Atlanta Falcons, and two words for you when this matchup comes up. Hell nah. I ain't starting either one of these guys in this game. Matt Ryan coming off back-to-back games in which he's thrown for less than 200 yards and had no touchdowns. Sure, there's a chance they get back Cordero Patterson this week, which could help kind of raise the floor a little bit, but there's not enough there. There's too many mistakes. The bad offensive line play in Atlanta isn't helping anything out. Plus, the Jacksonville defense hasn't been playing half bad. I'm going to sit Matt Ryan here this week. As for Trevor Lawrence... It's a broken record here. I feel like I say the same thing almost every week. Another week, another game with no touchdowns for Trevor Lawrence. That's now three straight games without a touchdown. I mean, I understand that the Jacksonville Jaguars are not a good team. I understand that maybe they should have selected differently in the draft. I understand that they've lost some weapons with DJ Chark and Travis Etienne. Now they've lost Jamal Agnew, which arguably is their top weapon, which is crazy to think about to begin with. There's just not enough here for Trevor Lawrence. I feel bad for the kid because it's probably going to be like this remainder of the season where he remains in the sit column. Now we head out west for the Houston Texans and New York Jets. And I sat here last week and I asked you if Zach Wilson was the third best quarterback on his own team. Maybe I should have asked if he was the fourth best quarterback because now we've seen Mike White. We've seen Josh Johnson. We've seen Joe Flacco come out and put up more points than we've seen Zach Wilson put up in a ball game. Now, Joe Flacco last week did not play bad at all. 24 of 39 for 291 yards and two touchdowns, but the Jets still lost. It's not like Joe Flacco is the savior that's going to carry the Jets into you know a great second half of the season. So what do we do? Do we go back to Zach Wilson? There's a chance he could be back here this week from the knee injury, and it's not a bad matchup. It's going up against Houston, who allows right around 22 fantasy points per game. And honestly, I would contemplate starting Joe Flacco if this was Flacco. We don't know who it's really going to be yet for sure, which is crazy to even think about. With the likes of Elijah Moore and Jamison Crowder, they're really running that double slot well, and it gives them a great outlet at all times. I hate the loss of Michael Carter in this offense, and until we get more clarity on who the quarterback is going to be, some type of stability, it's going to be a sit for all of them right now. For Houston... Is Tyrod Taylor an option? I mean, he's super reliant on his rushing. It's basically kind of like a diet version of Jalen Hurts at this point. But the Jets allow over 30 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, the most in the NFL. So this is not a bad matchup whatsoever. Is this the game that we get more Brandon Cooks? Maybe we get a little bit more Nico Collins in the end zone this week. It sounds absolutely nuts. And it really depends on who you have as options. Not going to be super high in my rankings, but I'd start Tyrod Taylor this week. Now we head over to Colorado for the Denver Broncos, Los Angeles Chargers. And basically last week, Herbie gave the finger to every one of his doubters here in 2021 that thought he'd kind of fallen off because he went out last week and put up a sexy, almost 500 total yards, including 90 yards rushing, which is not something we're used to seeing from Justin Herbert. And that absolutely raised the ceiling a ton in week 11. Plus, we saw Mike Williams get back on track. We saw a postgame interview with Keenan Allen saying, hey, we got to continue to get the ball to Mike. Williams more the guy is a difference maker now Denver coming off their bye week allowing right around 16 fantasy points per game to quarterbacks but with this type of ceiling and if this offense can really get going plus we see Austin Eckler super involved still you can't sit Justin Herbert as for Teddy B the ceiling just hasn't been there as of late only two passing touchdowns total over his last three games played they're using their running back super heavily and it's limiting the upside in the passing game now the Chargers yeah sure they allow right around 19 fantasy points per game And this could be a decent game for Teddy B, but there's so many better, safer options out there with higher ceilings that for right now, I'm going to sip myself some Teddy Bridgewater.
Up to Lambeau Field now for the Green Bay Packers, Los Angeles Rams, and a couple of no-brainers here in this game, right? We have two top 12 options at the quarterback position in Aaron Rodgers and Matthew Stafford. Now, Aaron Rodgers still limited with the quote-unquote turf toe or whatever you want to call it. He says it's super painful, bothered him more than he expected it to. But they're so reliant on the passing game here in Green Bay. And it's one of those things where I think Aaron Rodgers is going to play through the pain, which is okay because he just threw for 23 out of 33, 385 yards and four touchdowns versus the Minnesota Vikings last week. So I think his toe is okay enough for him to still go out there and put up some big numbers. They have to stay in this playoff race. They need Aaron Rodgers under center if they want to keep winning ballgames. They've already lost Aaron Jones. If they lose Aaron Rodgers, the season is basically going to, to tank for the Packers. He's going to fight through it, continue to play in a matchup like this they're going to have to go back and forth so i'll start me some aaron Rodgers. then as for matthew stafford another guy coming off of a couple bad games only two touchdowns to four interceptions over his last two games combined but they're coming off the bye week hopefully they righted the ship it's a tough defense going up against green bay though they allow only 17 fantasy points per game there's just too many big play opportunities in both of these offenses right with cooper cup and now odell beckham van jefferson we got you know Devonte adams on the other side we've seen mvs make a sighting here this past week too many big play opportunities where these guys may not have to go out there and throw 30 40 50 times a game to still have a great ceiling for both of them their ceilings are so high in a potential shootout they're both going to be starts now we head out to the bay for the san francisco 49ers minnesota vikings my manscaped matchup of the week that's right as soon as this video is over head over to manscaped.com link down below in the description and find yourself something nice for the holidays fellas they got some great black friday sales right now as well but be sure to use our promo code headliners at checkout so you can receive 20 percent off and free shipping don't miss out on that but a lot of people are going to be asking hey How come Stafford and Rodgers isn't the Manscaped matchup? Well, honestly, it's time to show some love to some guys who really don't get it anywhere else, Kirk Cousins and Jimmy G. Now, for Jimmy G, we've talked about him for a few weeks, that once George Kittle comes back and he's healthy, Jimmy G is a fantasy startable quarterback, and he has been. He's now had three straight games with at least two touchdowns and only one interception. You add in the Swiss Army knife that they have in Debo Samuel and the potential you know, upside of Brandon Ayuk if he can get healthy here in the next few days. It's definitely one of those things on a weekly basis basically where Jimmy G can go out there, maybe not have these ungodly numbers, but if he can go out and throw for 250 and two touchdowns every single week, he's a pleasant surprise for a lot of people. Uh, For Kirk Cousins, we kind of know what to expect from him as well. Another top 12 performance, two touchdowns, now in seven out of the 10 games played this season. Justin Jefferson playing on a a crazy level right now. We know Adam Thielen is going to be active in the red zone. San Francisco allows right around 20 fantasy points per game, and they've been easier to throw on than to run on. We need a lot more of the same here this week so for both Jimmy G and Kirk Cousins both starts now we go out to Baltimore for the Ravens and the Browns and I mean maybe it's my childish immaturity at times but does anybody else out there feel like the reason that Lamar sat last week is because he had the squirts again and just didn't want to tempt fate if you know what I'm talking about because we know if Lamar Jackson is healthy and he's playing, we start him in fantasy football. That is not a huge question. He has plenty of weapons to throw to. Does he get Hollywood Brown back this week? Cleveland allows right around 20 fantasy points per game. Lamar's not a question. As for Baker, dude right now is held together with like half-chewed purple now and laters, duct tape, and old rusty paper clips. It's, it's not looking good for Baker Mayfield, but he's trying to go out there every single week and fight through it. He has two touchdowns to three interceptions over his last two games combined, and he's really starting to struggle completing passes. He's hovering right around that. 50% mark, which is not what we're used to for Baker Mayfield. Running out of options there. They're really going to rely heavily on the run game and Nick Chubb. In my opinion, not worth it here this week. Going to sit Baker Mayfield. Which leaves us Monday Night Football, the Seattle Seahawks Washington football team, and has Russ forgotten how to cook? Dude has no touchdowns now in back to back games. I mean, the offensive line just isn't giving him enough time to let those deep routes down the field to DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett for them to develop. He's not getting that amount of time, and it's really hampering this entire offense. But a matchup against the Washington football team who allow over 29 fantasy points per game to opposing quarterbacks, the most in the NFL by like five fantasy points per game, is just too good of a matchup to waste here for Russell Wilson. Now with Russ and DK and Lockett, you have to think that they're just too good to not be able to figure this out. They're going to have a great chance in primetime football to bounce back. Russ may be slightly lower in my rankings due to his inconsistencies here as of late, but he's still going to be a start for Washington. Taylor Heineke looked pretty dang good against a good Carolina defense just this past week. He now has back-to-back wins against the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Carolina Panthers. 
Two pretty good defenses. He's utilizing weapons all over the field as well. Plus, he could be getting back Logan Thomas this week, which is a great option inside the red zone. Seattle allows right around 20 fantasy points per game, and it wouldn't surprise me if we see Heineke out there utilizing a little bit more of that rushing upside this week as well. So for this week, he's going to be a start. All right, those are my starts and sits for the quarterback position here. Week 12 fantasy football. Hopefully I was able to shed a little bit of light on the quarterback on your roster and, and, and help you make some decisions here for a, a difficult week, right? We're heading into the home stretch of the playoffs here for fantasy football. Got to try to make the best plays we possibly can. But just a reminder, I don't care if you're out of the playoffs or not. At this point, you can still play spoiler and go out there and try to keep some other teams out of the playoffs. That's always fun to do as well. So hopefully you guys are having a great week. Hopefully you can get done with work or school or whatever you got going on and enjoy yourself a nice long weekend, kind of mentally relax here with some football, some food, some cold drinks, a soft couch, a foot rest, whatever it is, a food coma at some point, it's going to be an enjoyable weekend and hopefully you guys have a great rest of your week. So for now, uh, make sure you check out all of our other videos, right? We got all of our start sits and our rankings coming out before the games on Thursday. I'm not sleeping a whole lot here these couple days, gotta make sure you guys have all the information you need, but hopefully you have a great rest of your day, a great week, and we'll talk to you later.